Okay, let's do the study of population here. I chose this to represent it. Okay, so we're going to mostly be focused on Malthus, right, or the Malthusian ideas of it. Okay, so uh, it's about 1800-ish. We're in England. There was this guy, Malthus, who was, among other things, I want to say an economist, some sort of clerk, had a bureaucratic administrative job. He was also a clergyman with the Anglican Church, right? Uh, this image really sums it up. This was actually maybe a little bit after, uh, maybe 30 years after when he was doing all of his writing, right? But we're picturing like Victorian era England, okay? He publishes this essay, this one, right? On the principle of population as it affects the future improvement of society and publishes this, right? London, 1798. And among other things, there is this central claim of the whole thing, which uh, I've quoted him here, right? So essentially that power of human population expanding is so superior to the power of the earth to produce subsistence for man that premature death must in some shape or other visit the human race. Uh, in plain English, what he was saying is, we're having too many people and we should try to stop that from happening or else we're all going to die. That's what this says, right? And if you're curious as to which specific groups of people he wanted to stop reproducing, I will give you one guess and you would be correct, right? Um, so let's just for a moment break down his ideas and reasoning and we'll, we'll get to the rest of it later. Okay, so we talked about how population growth is exponential, right? It's an exponential increase over time in terms of population. This is true, broadly speaking, for cells. It's true for animals, provided that they have sufficient resources, right? And so his argument was that even though population goes up exponentially over time, agriculture and production of food does not, which is why he looked into the future and saw this sort of famine and catastrophe that uh, people were going to reproduce exponentially and there wouldn't be enough food and there would be some sort of massive famine or die off the great death of human beings right in a sort of visual form right so we've got like numbers here getting bigger and on this axis right moving to the right we go forward in time right so population in red is increasing exponentially just like the bacteria whereas resources especially food production does not go up exponentially over time, right? Is increasing in a linear way, right? And what his argument essentially was is that there would be this point of crisis where there were far more people than there were resources. And as a result, that there would be this great, you know, famine and death and die off and, you know, catastrophic destruction of human beings. That was his claim, all right? Now, uh, we're going to consider this question of whether he was correct. Not take it as a foregone conclusion, but just for a moment, consider the arguments themselves and not why he was making them or their impacts, right? So, uh, he was right about uh, one thing, right? Which is uh, in animal populations, right? So, a population of birds on an island, right? What happens? Well, when there's just a few of them, there's plenty of resources, so they eat and they do things that birds do and reproduce, right? Exponentially. Until there starts to be, you know, some number of birds, which is far more than the amount of food and resources, in which case they start to compete, not growing as quickly, and that population starts to reach what is called its carrying capacity. Resources are limited, right? The environment only has so many resources. And as you get more and more birds, right, and they start competing with each other for the same number of resources, eventually what starts to happen is the growth rate decreases. And this idea, right, that he had, that uh, population would go up exponentially, resources would either go up linearly or stay the same, right, did in part spur research into evolution, right? is part of what spurred Darwin later on to go out to the Galapagos and develop his ideas of natural selection, right? Evolution by natural selection, which we have covered. So in that sense, it was hugely influential, and in that sense, it was good. So this idea, right, that the uh, environment would reach its carrying capacity, and then you would have competition, and only some of those individuals would survive, and only the surviving individuals would 
pass on copies of their genes, and so as a result, the population would change over time, like as covered in evolution. So in that sense, he was right and was very good. But the problem is, of course, that it doesn't apply to human beings the same way for a number of reasons, right? Uh, to put it into one word, the reason why it doesn't work the same for human beings is this thing called uh, culture as defined how. We're just going to say that culture in this context means socially transmitted information, right? People talk to each other, they transmit information that way. Uh, to sum it up, right, other animals, right, like dolphins, will have sex with each other for pleasure, but human beings are the only ones who talk about it afterward, right? The socially transmitted information culture is the part that makes human beings different. How does this relate to everything we've talked about? Well, uh, just to a, a first degree, technology is different, right? Uh, birth control technologies were developed something like 50 years after Malthus published this, right? He was writing this in a world where there was no widespread, affordable, accessible birth control. By about 1850, there was. And given the choice, people started deciding for themselves that they were going to have fewer human beings. This became something that could control. It was not something that he could have foreseen because he could not foresee what technology would be like 50 years in the future, but is a huge part of why he was wrong, right? Other aspects of why, right? Uh, this is part of the so-called second agricultural revolution, starting in maybe 17th, 18th century, especially in Britain, uh, largely fueled by developments in technology, right? So as technology improves, um, people are able to produce far more food than they could before, right? So whenever we looked at this, right, this kind of assumed that population and resources were totally different things, had no relationship, completely independent, which is not true at all. As you get more people and people talk to each other and share information with one another, they develop technologies that change the shape of this resource curve. In other words, these are not independent factors. These are interdependent factors. As you get more people, you get more technological development, which takes this curve, right, and does this with it, right? People are able to produce far more food than they could before because of developments in technology. Could he have foreseen developments in technology? No. Uh, could he have been wise enough to realize that he couldn't have foreseen developments of technology? Yeah, he could have been smart enough to realize that he didn't know this, right? So we have this second agricultural revolution, right? And food production goes way up as a result. So this line, right, for resources, right, food going steadily up over time, doesn't work, right? Instead, the agricultural productivity does increase in a way that is exponential. People are able to, by farming techniques and for a variety of reasons, produce far more resources than they could before. So as population goes up, technology starts to develop faster, which changes the resource curve, which causes population to go up. Okay, so you get a really, really complicated interdependent relationship between human population and resources because they develop technology. Uh, parts of why this would occur, right? So crop rotation is one technique that started to develop at this time. So... As we know, right, soil has all these different nutrients in it, and different crops prefer different kinds of nutrients. Different crops will pull different sorts of nutrients out of the soil. So the idea is you plant one crop and then another, right, something like this that helps to fix nitrogen, right? Whereas this one depleted the nitrogen, this one helps to restore it back, right? And you plant crops in the right order and kind of rotate them instead of just growing one crop over and over. And then you can produce much more of all these different things than you could if you just tried to grow one crop, right? Uh, mechanical plowing, right? Improvements in technology to where people could till soil, right? And help the soil to circulate in terms of nutrients and everything, right? By machine instead of having to do it all by hand. There were changes in the way that land was sort of uh, assigned to people, right? So people have private property and now can develop better techniques, right, and produce a lot more food as a result. Okay, here is where we have to talk about the sort of ugly consequences of his ideas, right? So this sort of Malthus idea, right, of there being this giant crisis because there's too many people led to these government-directed efforts of population control, forced sterilization, among the worst things that have ever happened ever, right? 
to take a couple examples. So this is uh, British colonial India, maybe circa 1840. I'll put a date on a note or something, right? So this is a colonial rule by Great Britain in India. And as part of how they implemented policies and ruled as a government, they essentially, to cut out all the middle, uh, tried to reduce the population there because they thought that it was going to lead to this collapse and be worse off, right? And in their mind, these were inferior people and, you know, them reproducing less was a good thing. That is how they saw it without exaggeration. That was a common view. And so, as a result, you have some really, really horrible events, right? So widespread famine, starvation, killed millions of people, completely unnecessary and driven by and justified by these ideas from Malthus of overpopulation, right? That, you know, this had to be done, and in their mind, these were inferior people, so it might as well be inferior people who died. So appalling. Um, this happened in Ireland as well, right? So these sorts of population control techniques, right? This idea that, oh, they had to reduce the population for the good of everybody, right? No matter how they did it, what the consequences were, led to a famine in Ireland, something like 1840s. Um, the population of Ireland has never recovered from this, ever. Even to this day, there are fewer people living in Ireland than there were before the famine. To give you an idea of the long shadows of these things, right? Uh, part of this also was intertwined with this idea of eugenics, right? Which is this sort of pseudoscientific idea that human evolution is something that could be understood totally and controlled from the top down by the government and shaped, right? And for all sorts of reasons, this does not work and led to incredible cruelty, led to forced sterilizations, not just in other parts of the world, but in the United States as well. Really appalling, abhorrent practices. Not only are they wrong morally, they do not work scientifically. They fail on every front. So, as far as whether Malthus was ultimately right, no. Right? It's morally wrong, full stop, and it is scientifically wrong. It is wrong on every possible front. It is wrong in essentially every way that a person can be wrong. So, why do we talk about it? Uh, because that essay that he wrote on population, especially considering the, infla the influence that it had on colonial regions right through the British Empire, is one of the most influential things ever written by anybody, ever. I mean, it's like, I don't know, religious holy books, right? And, you know, Martin Luther's stuff. And then this would be up there on that list. Hugely influential, but we have to understand it, and we have to understand why it is not correct. With that in mind, we will look ahead to the future, to stages of development in the world as it is, and to what we might be able to expect moving forward in the world.